Welcome to online worship here at University United Methodist Church. No matter if you join every week or this is your first time joining, we are so glad you're here. No matter where you are on your faith journey or your life journey, you are welcome in this place with us. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Today, I will be preaching on the story of Simeon and Anna from Luke 2. It's a story about faithfulness, about wise church ladies, about endings and beginnings. I hope that you are excited to talk about it with me. I also want you to be thinking about what things you are pondering for the new year. Resolutions, goals, hopes, dreams, all the things you might be thinking of as we are on the precipice of a brand new year. I'm so glad you're here to join us today. Will you join me in our opening prayer? Gracious God, here on the heels of Christmas, we speak of love, we speak of joy, we speak of candle lighting and fireside, we speak of dreams being fulfilled, we, dream, we speak of glorias and angel choruses, we speak the words, do not be afraid. Here on the heels of Christmas, we are called to speak for the world needs a light. A light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. Let us worship and listen, then let us speak. Amen. Now please join us as Alicia leads us in song. Oh, come, oh, ye faithful, joyful and joyful. Hear now our scripture from Luke 2, 22 through 40. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Sim Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. 
Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage, then as a widow at the, to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At the moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Welcome, friends. Would you please pray with me? Gracious and holy God, I give thanks for this day for the opportunity to be here in your presence, to be here with these people who are worshiping from near and far. God, I pray that you would speak through me today, that we might all know it, what it is that you want for us in this new year and what it looks like to be faithful people of God. I pray all these things in your name. Amen. Friends, welcome to the last sermon of 2023. If you've made it this far, you've come back after Christmas, I applaud you and your willingness to hang out with me again this time, the last time of the year. As we've come to this final day of 2023, I wonder how you have or continue to reflect on what this year has meant to you and how it might have looked differently than you imagined it to. In what ways did it far exceed your expectations, and in what ways was it disappointing or just not that great? As with most things, it tends to be easier to remember the worst stuff of the year and forget all the small miracles and happy events. I had a friend who had a giant jar, and every time something good happened during the year, she would write those things down and put them in the jar. At the end of the year, she would look at her jar and all the things that she put in there, and she could not believe the things that she had forgotten that had happened. There were many beginnings and endings that happened in the life of the church and in your own lives as well this year. As we have recently celebrated the birth of the Messiah and the new beginnings that brings to our year, we are also recognizing the old and new things that happen at midnight tonight. How might you be excited for what is to come tomorrow? And in what ways might you be anticipating some grief you know will appear in the coming year? It's perfectly okay if you aren't fully ready for a new year to begin tomorrow. And it's also just fine if you cannot wait to leave 2023 behind. Our scripture today is full of new beginnings and some anticipated endings. We, we begin with Mary and Joseph bringing Jesus to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. And this comes from Exodus 13. The Lord said to Moses, consecrate to me all the firstborn, whatever is the first to open the womb among the Israelites of human beings and animals is mine. This story and, later, and the later one about Jesus entering the temple as a child reinforce his Jewish identity. Jesus' family is a very faithful Jewish family of Israel. Not only is this a very devoted Jewish family, but they are also depicted as a family of a very specific economic situation. The two turtle, turtle doves they present as sacrifices put them amongst the poor. Leviticus 5.7 says, But if you cannot afford a sheep, you shall bring to the Lord as your penalty for the sin that you have committed two turtle doves or two pigeons, one for sin offering and the other for burnt offering. This is important because we see Jesus throughout his ministry showing affinity and attentiveness to the needs of the poor. This shows his lifelong experience of those who are on the margins, not a later interest he shows with no reasoning. When Jesus talks about the poor, he's talking about himself and his own experience, the people around him, the people he knew, the people he grew up with. 
Shively Smith, professor at New Testament at Boston Seminary, explains, This account is a wonderful invitation for our churches to consider the diversity of messages, voices, and locations among us as we celebrate the birth of Jesus as the Christ. The story of Jesus' birth and early life in Luke makes room for a variety of bodies and proximities to the gospel message. It makes room for women and men. It makes room for youth and elder. It makes room for the poor, disappointed, and unsuspecting. The good news of Jesus' birth is that insiders and outsiders of our immediate communities and families can carry the good news of God's salvation liberation, and acceptance, not just to others in the world, but to us as well. Like Mary pondering the words of Simeon in the temple, even contemporary readers of the good news with their own stories of divine encounter need to be reminded of what else God can do. What we encounter again and again in this passage is faithfulness. We experience the faithfulness of Mary and Joseph showing up for the consecration of Jesus, we experience the faithfulness of Simeon and the promise of God to eventually see the Messiah before he dies. That's a pretty open-ended promise from the Holy Spirit. It takes patience and deep faith to continue to show up and know that God will make good on the promises. But we get to experience the absolute joy that Simeon feels upon seeing the child. I just imagine him holding that baby and dancing around in front of Mary and Joseph, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. There's something incredibly celebratory and fun about dancing around with a baby in your arms, full of joy and excitement for what is to come. Dr. Smith continues, the story moves forward to a more celebratory moment in which songs and passionate declarations and high expectations are shared publicly. Simeon and Anna introduce into the story a new air of expectancy and excitement. Up to this point, the narrative expectation was focused on the birth moments of Jesus and John the Baptist. With Simeon and Anna, the object of expectancy shifts to what Jesus will do. In the words of Simeon to Mary, Jesus is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed. Anna and Simeon are the external interpreters of the significance of Jesus' birth. The faithfulness of Anna and her title as the most devoted church lady and prophetess. Sometimes we are called to do things because they matter, not because you might get the results that you always desire. As we are staring into the face of a new year and all the things that we hope for this year holds for us, I wonder what are the most faithful things you can be doing? Sometimes in doing the most faithful work, we don't get to see the end result, but can find comfort in knowing it is the thing that God is calling us to be doing. Sometimes we miss the most interesting and hopeful things when we don't show up to do those faithful things. I'm sure that Anna and Simeon could have thought of many other ways to spend their time than hanging out in the temple and waiting for a baby to arrive. We know that Anna was wid widowed after only seven years and then spent the rest of her widowed life in the temple waiting and praying and waiting. I also want to acknowledge that no work of faithfulness and no prospect of a new year come with foolproof happiness and success. There will be days or weeks that will be difficult as we are keeping the faith and days or weeks or sometimes months when a year does not seem to be going the way we'd like it to. Simeon also included Mary, included to Mary, a sword will pierce your own soul too. The journey for Mary will not be all praise and celebration. There will be a time that will be very difficult for her to watch and to hold witness to what Jesus's life will look like. As we consider what a new year holds for us, we tend to be very results-based. We want to see the impact of the work we're putting in all areas of our lives. We learn in our scripture today that sometimes we have to, be, we have to hold our expectations with an open hand, giving the results up to God to do with what God will. I like having some control over the outcomes of my life, or at least I want to believe that I do. When we lean into this faithfulness journey, 
for this new year with Anna, Simeon, and Jesus, we are taking a chance to open our hands and our minds to what God has for us. What adventures and new relationships and challenges and hopes we have for this new year. I want for us to live an embodied experience of 2024, fully present to the opportunities that God has before us. Sometimes when we don't see the outcomes we expect fast enough, we tend to give up on whatever is before us. My challenge for you this year is to lean into the wonder of God's faithfulness, to show up everywhere you go, show up and be present to what could happen and who could show up with you. Hold all your expectations with an open hand and love that God will show you this new year. Here's the great thing. If we are measuring our success by how faithful we are, we definitely are not going to fail at our resolution, our goal as quickly because faithfulness is a long game. It's not a short game. Just ask Anna. She knows. The best church lady there ever was. The message of Jesus is for all of us. The young, the old, the widow, the skeptic, all of us. This message is of joy and hope and encouragement, but not a foolproof plan. There's going to be some bumps. There's going to be some difficulties, but God will be present with you. You will never be alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Hear now this prayer. Divine voice. In the beginning, it was you who spoke over the water and brought forth creation. And then it was you who asked Cain, where is your brother? It was you who spoke to Elijah in a still, small voice. And it was you through angels who spoke to Mary and Joseph and the shepherds. You have always been speaking in words, in memories, in songs, and in dreams. So today, as we prepare to hear your word read aloud, we ask that you would speak to us once again, as only you can, so that we might speak this same good news to others. We are listening. We are grateful. Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let every sea her King. Let every heart prepare in room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and earth and nature sing. He rules the world with truth. Your invitation today is to consider what it looks like to be more intentionally faithful in all areas of your life. How will you continue to show up to the things that are important and the relationships that matter to you? And of course, we are able to do things like this because of your very generous gifts. If you'd like to give, you can visit our website at uumc.org give. I want to thank you for joining us for worship today and now receive today's benediction. Friends, hear this benediction. As you step out onto the precipice of a brand new year, full of wonder and opportunity and joy and curiosity, and probably some difficult stuff as well, know that God goes with you. You never go alone. And sometimes the long game is the best game. Just ask Anna and Simeon. Remember that you are loved exactly as you are in this moment, not as you wish to be next week, next month, or next year. God go with you wherever you go. Mm -hmm.